There was once a plant so powerful that entire civilizations relied on it. It fueled empires, restored exhausted soils, and produced more nutrition per acre than corn ever could. Yet today, almost no one talks about it. It's not a new GMO breakthrough or a lab-grown hybrid. It's an ancient, forgotten super crop that outsmarted corn centuries ago. And honestly, it might just hold the key to feeding a world facing soil depletion, drought, and climate instability. Gardeners and homesteaders around the world are rediscovering it, not because it's trendy, but because it works. It grows fast, fixes its own nitrogen, and produces high-protein seeds, leaves, and even usable biomass for compost and animal feed. This is a crop that heals the land as it feeds you. If you've ever wondered what the next generation of sustainable food systems could look like, this is it. So, let's talk about the forgotten supercrop that could save our future amaranth. Amaranth once rivaled corn as the food of empires. Long before industrial agriculture, the Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans grew amaranth as a sacred food crop. It wasn't just a side plant, it was a staple, often providing up to 80% of the grain consumed in entire regions. When Spanish colonizers realized how vital it was to indigenous diets and rituals, they banned it, seeing it as a threat to control. Corn was easier to tax and process industrially. Amaranth faded into obscurity. But now gardeners and soil engineers are realizing what those ancient civilizations already knew. Amaranth doesn't just survive. It thrives where corn fails. It can handle poor soils, inconsistent rain, and brutal heat. While corn demands fertilizer, amaranth feeds itself and even improves the ground for the crops that follow. Why does amaranth outsmart corn in modern gardening systems? Amaranth is a C4 photosynthesis plant, meaning it uses sunlight more efficiently than most crops, especially under high heat and low moisture. Corn is also C4, but here's the twist. Amaranth doesn't require the same nitrogen-heavy feeding that corn does. Its deep taproot system mines nutrients from lower soil layers, reducing the need for synthetic fertilizers. Corn yields well only under perfect conditions. Rich soil, constant moisture, and high inputs. Amaranth, on the other hand, grows in lean soil, using less water while producing edible leaves, sort of like spinach, seeds similar to quinoa, and strong stalks that can be turned into green manure or mulch. A well-grown stand of amaranth can yield one and a half to two and a half tons of grain per acre, with an additional three to four tons of biomass for compost or livestock feed. In comparison, corn might produce more grain weight, but its nutrient profile and swastat salmon moites then swing for nastur and its soil cost, and trust for a one serpumer dasit sonster are far inferior. So, let's talk about how to grow amaranth successfully in your garden. First, start with a variety suited to your climate. Golden Giant, Red Leaf, or Love Lies Bleeding are all really reliable performers. Sow the seeds directly into warm soil once night temperatures stay above 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll want to plant them shallow about 1 cm deep and then thin the seedlings to around 30 cm apart, with rows spaced 45 cm apart. Amaranth grows tall, sometimes reaching over 2 meters so yeah, make sure you give it enough space and good airflow. Once it's established, it's actually remarkably drought tolerant. Water deeply once a week, rather than doing frequent shallow watering. Overwatering is probably the most common mistake. Amaranth's taproot actually prefers to chase moisture deeper down. If you want higher yields, feed with a balanced organic fertilizer at a 1 to 1 to 1 NPK ratio early in its growth, for example, one part composted manure, one part bone meal, and one part wood ash, all mixed into the topsoil. Avoid overfeeding nitrogen though, since it'll just promote leaf growth at the expense of grain. By midsummer, your amaranth will be setting flowers that mature into thousands of tiny, nutritious seeds. Once the seed heads turn golden and the stems dry, just cut and hang them upside down in a dry, ventilated place. Thresh gently and winnow to separate the grain. You know, amaranth's true power isn't just in what it feeds, it's in what it leaves behind. Its deep roots loosen compacted soil, improve aeration, and bring up trace minerals like calcium, magnesium, and zinc from those deeper subsoil layers. When the plant decomposes, these minerals return to the topsoil, enriching it naturally. In regenerative systems, amaranth is often grown as a rotation crop after corn or wheat to help repair nitrogen balance and organic matter content. 
Gardeners who grow it in alternating beds actually report up to 30% higher yields in subsequent crops like beans, squash, and even root vegetables. For an effective soil rebuilding mix, try 40% chopped amaranth stalks, 40% green compost, and 20% wood chips as a mulch or compost layer. Within two months microbial activity really skyrockets, and the soil develops a darker, crumbly structure that holds moisture and nutrients far better than before. This is honestly where it really shines. The young leaves can be cooked like spinach or just added raw to salads. They're high in protein, calcium, and iron. The seeds, when popped or cooked, offer a complete amino acid profile, something corn just can't match. Grind amaranth grain into flour and mix it at a 1 to 4 ratio with wheat flour for a nutrient-dense bread. Or, you know, cook it whole as a porridge with broth for a savory, filling meal. Even the chaff and stems can be used. Chickens and goats really relish the residues, returning fertility to your soil through their manure. Unlike corn, every part of the amaranth plant has a role in a self-sustaining system. Feed, food, and fertilizer all in one. The future, honestly, belongs to crops that give more than they take, as soil erosion, water scarcity and fertilizer dependency push global agriculture toward a breaking point, the crops that will survive are the ones that regenerate the land rather than strip it. Amaranth has quietly done that for thousands of years, and well, it's time it made its comeback. For gardeners, it's more than just a crop. It's a statement. It says you understand the land, you're planning ahead, and you're part of a growing movement towards soil independence. If you're serious about building a resilient garden that thrives through heat, drought, and changing seasons, don't overlook this forgotten super crop. Try a patch of amaranth this season, track your soil's progress, and just watch what happens. You'll see why ancient farmers called it the grain of the gods. If this guide sparked something in you, subscribe to Sile Engineer and share this with a gardener who's ready to grow smarter. The soil remembers what you plant, so yeah, make it count.